What do you think, Jones? Gonna do a live video? I think so too. Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical checking in. Stay low, don't blow, go slow. What the heck does that mean? A uh, really cool little advice I heard today. Heard it from a pastor uh, that was a guest speaker at the church I go to or an associate pastor at the church I go to down here in Florida. And uh, he's actually a, basically like an Irish guy and his father told him that. And so it's, it's an Irish saying from what I can understand. Here in a little while, we're gonna unbox all this cool gear in here that I just got in. So definitely stay tuned to check, check out all this gear. It's a bunch of stuff. First, I'm gonna just talk about that little bit of advice that I got. It was really, like I say, it's probably some of the best advice that I've ever received. Stay low, don't blow, go slow. And what the, what the heck does that mean? All right, so this is how I take it, all right? And uh, the gentleman today said that he's still learning all of the meanings that this particular saying can, can have. To me, when I hear stay low, gray man theory, the real gray man theory, low profile, right? Keep a low profile. In order to have the maximum success in life, no matter who you are or what you do, all of us should take a little bit of a tip from, I mean, it goes all the way back to Sun Tzu, the art of war, military tactics and uh, logistics. You just don't want everybody to know your plans before you try to implement them because other people are just going to try and get the jump on you. Information is a uh, so crucial to success and it can be used against you as well so definitely stay low keep a low profile guys check out the real gray man theory i've got a whole playlist on it now and it's just really great stuff that you can take with you and it's free and it doesn't cost anybody anything it's free for you to watch the videos it's free for you to learn it's free for you to implement the stuff into your life it just get better at life by implementing certain tactics and it's all here it's all between the ears all right so the second thing is don't blow and it's don't blow yourself up all right don't toot your own horn don't blow your own horn don't uh don't go around telling everybody everything you've ever done and uh it really doesn't matter what you've done if you do a good enough job then you know it will speak for itself and that doesn't apply to you know marketing if you're a business owner that doesn't apply to you know doing your job or um you know things of that particular nature what it applies to is not bragging okay not being a, a braggart all right not going around just saying oh i'm so great all this stuff no but uh but it's okay to be have confidence and especially if you're in the business world it's okay to market things uh as i do i market my own products and and i you know i speak the truth on them and a lot of times in today's day and age we confuse confidence with cockiness and uh you know true confidence is so rare anymore that i think it's i think it's important to have confidence and and now it's so rare that people mistake it for cockiness all the time it's also very important not to be prideful or cocky uh because you know pride comes before the fall so uh you know don't be too proud of yourself work hard stay humble and uh, also don't be afraid to market yourself it's good balance you know it's um you're not tooting your own horn in the case of marketing yourself you're you're saying what you're capable of you're saying what your products are capable of and then you're willing to follow through and you do it on a daily basis all right it, if you have if there's no advantage to speaking of things if you're having a conversation with somebody you don't you know just trying to generally you know speak and socialize you don't need to be speaking of your accomplishments right but if you're marketing something then you can show the better qualities especially if like with what i do uh edged weapons and things of that nature if they can help somebody else then uh then it's a real win for everybody so that covers stay low cover don't blow and the third one all right is go slow and i've really just found especially you know training young men and women that have worked with me you know in the past with my business being a business owner and and coaching football uh I've coached, you know, women's track, men's football at the University of Utah. I've just uh, coached and trained so many younger people. And I just find that, you know, go slow doesn't mean that you're lazy. It means that you take your time and do a good job. Don't make mistakes. Now, if you find yourself in the middle of a mistake, 
don't stop, make that mistake full speed, all right? Go hard and finish it through, and then slow down and do it right after that. Fix it and do it right. And uh, an example of that would be, you know, I learned that in football. I, uh, I played college football, coached college football. And, you know, if, you're ha if, if you make a wrong move and you're doing the wrong play, it's, the, it's too late to stop. You got to follow through. Go 100% and make that play, even if it's the wrong play, because if you make the play, even though you did the wrong thing, you'll get a little bit of forgiveness there. But if you do the wrong play, you know, and then you don't make the play, you, you, you just freeze up and screw everything up, then you're just going to lose your spot. And in the business world, that means, you know, sometimes if you make a mistake, Sometimes if it's wrong, you know, morally wrong, if you if, if you need to just say, hey, I made a mistake, that's very important to be able to say, I made a mistake as well and change it. But also, if you do something, you know, they say most of the inventions or a good portion of the inventions uh, are, are actually mistakes. You know, scientists make invent things by mistake a lot of times. Uh, saccharin, you know, for example, you should look that up. Um, if memory serves, I think it was a mistake that led Thomas Edison uh, to invent the light bulb. So just, just a lot of different interesting things. So a lot of times make that mistake and follow through. Uh, but if it's, if it's something that you know is wrong and your conscience is telling you, you know, that, hey, we shouldn't follow through with this, then at that point you don't follow through, obviously. So go slow means when you're, going, when you're doing something, take the time to do it right. Don't get in a rush. I, uh, I always give my workers when I'm training somebody either how to weld, uh, you know, for example, a, a lot of, I, I have uh, guys that work with me as apprentices in the blacksmith shop and uh, I weld and build all my own knife grinders and stuff like that. We're always welding something. And, uh, you know, I teach these guys how to weld. It's a very valuable skill. I like teaching, you know, anything that I can help other people learn. And when I'm teaching them how to weld, I always give an example that I was in a rush one time. I had, uh, I was, I, I think it might have been when I had my car, my truck, one of off-road vehicles that I uh, did, uh, you can see them on the website, was, you know, in a parade and uh, had to finish up some welding on it and just got in a real rush. Something didn't go right. Uh, had to pull it off and throw it on the floor and was welding and welded somehow caught on fire uh, a, a welding lead or I was welding and then went to a different spot and I was in the zone on the weld and I think the welding lead passed over a piece of the metal that was still hot from one of the old areas that I welded and burnt up the welding lead and it just caused me to lose more time and that's when we say go slow it means you know take the time to prepare the area take the time to do it right always do it right um my dad always told me ever since I was a kid if you're going to do something you might as well do it right and that's really just rang true in my life and I feel like it's just something that so many people don't understand you know don't and I, and I and I take it to the extreme I don't do anything at all in life if I'm not going to do my best I just won't do it there's no reason for me to waste my time doing something if I'm if it's not going to be the best I'm not going to make a knife if I can't say that that knife is the best that I can do and and and, and that's the way that I was able to get to this level now where I'm making you know, top level knives internationally, worldwide. Uh, and it just took so many knives that were the best I could make. And then the best I could make gen one, gen two, gen three, gen four, gen five, and then, uh, prototypes before that 10, 15, 20 prototypes before I would even hit gen one. And every single one of them doing my best was able to, what led to the point now where, you know, the clothing design, uh, every aspect of the clothing takes so much time and effort, you know, to go slow figure out the best camouflage pattern. Don't use somebody else's camouflage pattern if you don't have to, right? You know, uh, every aspect, the cut, learn about, don't just say, oh, I want to copy this. No, why is the, the cut and the pattern? And why is it like this? Why is it double stitched? Should it be triple stitched? Is it okay being single stitched? Would it make it lighter? Would it make it faster? Would it make it better? All right, so take your time, go slow. Now, I'm going to jump right into this unboxing over here. Hopefully you guys can see what I've got in the bag, right? Got a ton of stuff in here. So we'll just, we're going to go through all this. I have a, uh, I have an old, uh, ghost knife up here. So I'm going to grab that. Bear with me for a second as I grab my old ghost knife so I can open some of this stuff. Um, I have recently had this been discussing with a couple customers. They've asked how long has the ghost knife been around? Everything like that. This ghost knife in particular, I've been using for at least five years. You can see on the handle of it, 
All right, this is one of the very original. It's even worn from where it's it bounces around in the boat. Okay, on the handle, it's <laughs> but it's still you know going strong. Look at the blade. I've cut thousands you know of things with this bait fish just beating around and and it just going strong so these are very very nice knives all right i i do like these they do last a long time one of my favorites and a great beater knife but little disclaimer they are not to be used for this right they're npe non-permissive environment knives so although i do it doesn't mean you should i have to see how strong this stuff is so i can tell you guys and so i can promote it and so i can know if there's a problem but i would i should be using an adc relentless right now all right so that's a quiz if you knew that or not what's an npe knife comment below if you know if you're a tactical guy if you have a little bit of tactical base of knowledge what's the difference between an npe knife and an edc knife and where should an npe knife be used and where should an edc knife be used now let's cut into this little box here this is uh, M-U-Z-E-N, okay? I believe they were founded in 1964. The name Musen to me sounds German. I don't know. I think it's always probably uh, anymore. Naming your business something that sounds German always seems to lend people thinking that you're going to get a BMW, <laughs> which... Bavarian Motor Works, by the way, out there in Bavaria, is uh, in Germany. Really uh, interesting culture. You guys should look into that. I'll uh, I'll never own a BMW, but hey, born to be wild. Pretty cool. Musen. All right. So, I'm gonna get right into unboxing this. Show you guys what we're doing. All right. Jones is uh, helping out here. So we've got. Born to be wild little gift bag that it comes with. I guess that's in case you want to give it as a gift. And then what else do we have here? What's in the box? Oh, that's pretty cool. It's like, a, it seems like almost like a, you know, I, I always get like cheap Dremels because I, you know, pretty much most of the Dremels get messed up all the time and, uh, or Dremels, you know, maybe not cheap Dremels, but I get all different kinds of ones. I've had all different kinds of ones. I've try, always tried to find one that's like super crazy sturdy. I've even done the, you know, Fordham high end and everything Dremel brand, off brand, all the way from Harbor Freight to Fordham, but none of them seem to work. That's what this case reminds me of. It's kind of like a Dremel style. Oh, would you look at that? It's smaller than I thought it was, but it's interesting. So this is a Bluetooth speaker. And it's actually not much, about twice the size of a Zippo lighter, which, uh, very interesting. I really thought that this was going to be bigger. Um, it might have a lot of sound, so we'll have to do the sound uh, testing in a different video. But that's pretty cool. That's uh, definitely a big advantage of the size. I'm actually quite impressed with the size there. So the actual... Uh, what will, how should I say the actual testing of this will be in a future video, but Musen link in description below, linking all this stuff in description below. So check that out. If you want to see that Bluetooth speaker, what's next is these cool Levo gauges. Okay. I installed these the other day, been using them for a few couple days now, and they show you, I'm going to rock the boat here a little while, both literally and figuratively. No, actually only literally, but these are gauges that uh, show basically your, you know, front to back, you know, when you're getting on a plane, whatnot, and they help me with ability, and then side to side, with ability to use the trim tabs. They're from Sun Company. I really like them. I actually did a full video. I already filmed the full video on how to install those and then how to use them. Super simple to install and then actually really cool, like a nice feature. I really like them. So, uh... They're from Sun Company. And then the reason I mention that is because I've got this. So this is also from Musen. They come with a little keychain. So I'll uh, keep that all stuff all together. But Sun Company is who makes uh, or who sells the Levo gauges, right? Got one there, one there. And they also, uh, they seem to, everything they seem to use seems to be pretty good quality, which uh, is impressive to me because, you know, these, you know, today it just seems like good quality is so hard to find. 
Uh, but they do. I've been pretty impressed with everything. Uh, designed and assembled in the USA uh, probably means basically inspected in the USA, which is why the stuff that doesn't get uh, past the cut probably goes back to China or gets thrown away. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty cool. And I do like these little outdoor window thermometers. They, the stuff that they make a ton of stuff, go check them out. Sun company link in description below. They do make really just a lot of stuff. Uh, barometer, this altimeter barometer in <clears throat> inclinometer i'm really excited to i'm going to install these in my in my vehicles a couple off-road vehicles and yeah so the sun company definitely makes some cool stuff i would recommend that you check them out i'm probably gonna install one of these little um window or temperature gauges just here on the window of the boat just see how long it stays there and then you know every time i do a video on the boat on the boat i'll just mention that uh, that I'm doing that mention that company and you know throw in a throw in a mention for them. So Sun Company, they make a lot more stuff. So definitely check out the different things that they have. They have a lot of different stuff. Like I say, uh, there's some tactical stuff in here. You guys are probably looking forward to seeing the tactical stuff. Unfortunately, Jones's life jacket just came from Amazon. That if anybody knows any companies that make cool dog life jackets and they want to get Jones a life jacket that we can get out here and test out, let me know. I think that would be really cool. So here also in the pack, we have this uh, holster, all right? And this holster is from AI Manufacturing, all right, a &I Manufacturing. And they obviously use some sort of, you know, vacuum, uh, you know, press to make these and you know they they seem pretty good they 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 seem like they did a good job finishing after you know a uh, big part you know i can do my own kydex for all my knives so i'm uh fairly well versed with kydex so they, they do a pretty good job here with the finish uh fit and finish as far as that goes i haven't tested it into the pistol but you know everybody's just using a blue gun anyway so it's kind of difficult to mess that up anymore the they have you know your your adjustability there with those with these rubber spacers that you see the the rubber spacers in there so you just screw these down and it it tightens it up this little thing here will help uh not you know it'll angle the holster into you so that way the the grip of the pistol that's up here doesn't stick out through your shirt you know having a concealed carry shirt helps too like the el sicario concealed carry shirt like what you see on my website the one thing i do not like about this holster is how hard, sharp this is, and it's very unfinished. You can see in here, inside there, right there, yeah, see that? The metal in there is jagged, and it's gonna destroy any kind of a leather belt. I like leather belts. So I, I can't even use this, not even one time with a leather belt on. So definitely an oversight from these guys. And uh, you know I do like the fact that they're using heavy duty metal clip, but it's sharp, jagged, and unfinished on the inside, and it's just not not something that I can recommend to you guys. So I told the, I talked to these guys. They wanted to know what I was going to do for the videos. Um, I'm going to see if I can find a belt that I don't mind messing up. Cause I can already tell you 100% this is going to mess my belt up. Uh, and then I'll, I'll run it and gun it. I'm going to talk to those guys a little bit more. They, they might not want me to keep making videos after this. Uh, just because I can tell you right now, it's not going to work. Not going to go as they thought it would. I told them I would do an unboxing and some follow-up videos, um, but you guys know that I'm gonna keep it real. So if your product is not uh, not in the top of its class, if it's not, you know, if it's not something that I can recommend to you guys, to my followers, I'm not gonna recommend it. And in this case, uh, the holster might be cool, but everybody and their brother makes a cool holster. You know what I mean? The actual plastic itself. If the clip isn't acceptable, if, it, if I can't use it without worrying about destroying my belt then I, I can't recommend that to you guys so uh i'm gonna talk to them and see what they recommend and see what they say maybe they have a different kind of clip maybe they're gonna improve their clip design in the future or maybe they'll just get uh upset and not take the constructive criticism and then the future of their business will uh we'll see uh basically <laughs> will be uh in line with what however this goes with them you can tell a lot by somebody's reaction to news that they don't want to hear so we have um 
Tacticon armament here, all right? And uh, I'm gonna show a lot of tactical stuff in the bag from Tactical Armament. So get right, getting right into that. This is a IFAC. So I'll, I'll put this alongside of all of the other medical IFAC kits that I have here on the channel. There's a, I got a bunch of them. I do highly recommend having some equipment in your video, in your vehicle. I do recommend even more than that, knowing how to use the medical equipment that you carry. So you have to have some medical training or at least practice, uh, practice on your dog. I'm just kidding. Don't practice on your dog, but get some practice for sure. Ouch pouch IFAC. So it's pretty cool. I like how they have the little patch on there. Cool. Uh, just extra detail. I always like to have my stuff listed if I'm going to be with multiple people, if I'm going to be on, uh, you know, I want to say, I don't want to say mission, if I'm going to be on uh, expedition or something like that out and about in the field, okay, I, I'd like to have that mark so I can say, hey, especially if it's in another language and I can just say, hey, go get the bag with the red cross on it. You know what I mean? Go get the bag with the red X. Uh, a lot of times I like to put a red X or a red cross on them. And then I, you know, if I need the medical equipment, if I'm not able to mobile, be mobile, right? So th in this case, it would be, there's a bag, you know, green bag, molly bag with a, with a cl cross on it. So these little patches are not just for looking cool. They do work for a lot of situations. One of the coolest things that I saw uh, from this company, Tacticon Armament, it was a... Uh, Let's see. Tacticon, yeah, Tacticon armament was these little gun magnets here. And I dropped my ghost knife down here. And it's not recommended to drop your ghost knife, but I did it and it's fine. It'll be okay. We'll live to see another day. So I'm going to uh, open this bag here and uh, show you that this is a really cool. I really am excited to actually do some cool stuff with these little magnets here, gun magnets. So you just like can install these pretty much anywhere. They have several different kinds of gun magnets, all different weights and stuff. And you can use them to conceal your gun like up under something, or you can use them to like make a gun display board, you know, different ideas. They sell tourniquets if you guys want to carry just a TQ. This is a really slim one that you can, you know, stick somewhere uh, it's not very bulky, but it's also the thicker, uh, band here can actually potentially help save a limb if you actually have to use that tourniquet and it's going to be on there a long time. So it's, I do like, I don't, I do like the tourniquets that are like thicker, like a belt style, just, uh, just because I don't like losing legs or arms. I'm, I'm not, uh, not exactly something I'm trying to do. So IWB holster mag pouch. This is a universal pouch. Uh, I don't necessarily recommend carrying an IWB holster universal that's, uh, unless maybe po potentially it's just like a small, like a uh, J frame revolver. And then you can use it in your pocket as well. Something like that's kind of like a pocket holster. What this is really cool for is for putting on your plate carrier. If you don't know, especially like me being, I've been overseas and had a plate carrier set up and, and had to get, uh, like last minute, get the, get the, get the pistol I was going to have on my plate carrier and didn't know what it was going to be. So I could set this up ahead of time and then I have to get my pistol in country and it doesn't matter what pistol I get. Uh, it's universal and will fit. So that, that's, that's one of the great things about universal holsters. So a lot of people have asked about my old universal holster in the, what video was it? It was the gray man versus hard target video. And it's something very similar to this is what I use. Then uh, we've got scrub blade. Okay, so these guys make, um, what do you call these things? Um, hmm. uh, windshield wipers, all right? <laughs> and basically, windshield wipers are very easy to change. If you guys aren't changing your own windshield wipers, definitely do it. I think these ones look really cool. They look really heavy duty. They look really nice. So I'm going to check these out. I'm going to install these on my vehicles. Can't really say much about them for now until I check them out, but they do look really nice. And uh, I do recommend you guys buying and changing your own um, windshield wipers. All right. So definitely check that out. This is an IFAC V1 from Tacticon Armament that I am very excited to be 
putting into use. Why is that? Because it, it, it's a lot more low profile. Okay, it's a lot more low profile and it looks, it doesn't necessarily look like something that I would, it, it's more applicable for gray man theory. It doesn't look so military-ish. And then if I have this in my, I can keep this in my bag, right? Uh, and it's something that I'm gonna, actually I'm gonna put this in my bag right now because I don't, right now I don't have medical, any kind of medical other than the, I don't have a bleed out kit. So I'll show you, this is my really, really cool, I'll show the, the tag there too. So IFAC right there, V1. And I just think that would be a good look for a, a gray man theory type loadout where you don't want to look super military. Um, if it's, if, you, if, you, if you're like full, if you got to go full, full, full gray man theory though, I will say that you, you probably want to get like a hiking one. Like if you're like a, a if you're in a third world country or in like, Say you're in Russia and you and pe somebody knows that you're an American, they're gonna know you're an American, and then they're gonna be watching you to see like, hey, is this guy? You don't want to act like a badass military guy in Russia, because, well, <laughs> you don't want to end up getting detained and uh, uh, you know kept and all that stuff. I I was uh, recently, you guys saw some videos I put up where I was crossing the border into Nicaragua, and I, they actually didn't let me in the country and they almost, they wanted to keep me in just, you know, there's a lot of Americans that go down there. And, um, that was mainly because when I got there, uh, there was, it was, the borders were considered to be unpassable. There was a big, there was a huge, um, there was rioting all through and there was a major blockade and they had the whole border blocked off. And so you couldn't get to the border of Honduras and Nicaragua where I was at, you couldn't, nobody could get there. So it was empty, it was completely empty. Nobody was there, it was a ghost town, ghost town. There I show up with this really awesome expedition vehicle, land cruiser build that I had. I had to go through mountains and go through terrain that they said was impossible, impassable. And uh, I show up and I'm the only one there. And so they just, it was the entire customs of the border border patrol people, the whole, the whole border checkpoint. Uh, was able to dedicate themselves to me so they started uh they went through my truck and they started going through everything asking to look at my gear and then they looked up they were about to let me into the country and then they looked up bone tactical online and uh so and you know i was i told them straight up i said I'm, hey i'm gonna be filming videos and stuff i'm doing vlogging and this kind of stuff and there it's illegal to film any kind of a government official they can put you in jail you know if you're an american they'll just lock you up and throw away the key it's considered to be like a, you know, like a political attack thing. I think there's some kind of a manatee or, uh, let's see what we got. There's some kind of a really big fish or something. I don't know if you guys can see the, the ripple effect in the water here, but it was either a giant fish that just blew up over here or some sort of a mammal that came up to blow manatee dolphin. Uh, if it comes up again, then it, then, you know, it's probably a mammal. If not, it's a fish and, uh, just blew up on some bait or something over here. Really cool. Uh, I just thought I'd share that and turn the camera over there just in case in the off chance that it was something that was going to come up again. I'm not seeing any more uh, actual bubbles or anything over there. So anyway, this type of a med kit, you know, that uh, this is the one that I sell with my Gray Man Operations Pack. If you're, su if you're really going to go super hardcore, you know, and you don't want anybody to potentially single you out as being... Um, you know, a, a skilled tactical person, you know, Tradecraft tells us that we don't want anything that looks even remotely military. But this one here is much better than, let me show you. So in that case, you know, if, if, if I'm on, you know, uniform patrol in the military, then something like this is fine. I can even stick it to the outside of my backpack if I'm in a desert or something, because everybody knows I'm in the military, it doesn't matter, right? Nobody's going to get close enough to steal it because I'm in a uniformed element. If not, I want this on the inside of a bag. You know, if I'm, if I'm not at uniform and I want to be able to hide something, then I want to go with something like this. If I think that somebody's going to be inspecting my gear, right, then I could, and I don't want to get known as a, you know, uh, somebody, if I don't want to get in problems somewhere I'm, you know, interrogated and all that, then that's what I'm going to want. Just a regular looking military or a non-military civilian looking med kit. So that's uh, the general gist of the stuff we've got in here. You know, I already showed you the, the tourniquet. You guys want to carry tourniquets, 
definitely check out Tacticon Armament. They've got some cool tourniquets. They've got some cool stuff. Uh, we've got, you know, uh, all this stuff is pretty much stuff that I've already showed you. So I'm uh, going to close out with that. I hope you guys liked the video. Definitely enjoyed, you know, making it for you. But the way that I can keep these videos coming is if you guys get active here on the channel. So if you like me making these live videos, it, believe it or not, it takes a lot of setup to do this. And I've got a lot going on with my business. And uh, I, I want, uh, I do need some feedback to know that my time is being best used. So if you guys do enjoy these kind of live videos, it's very important that you like, comment, share, subscribe to the channel, all that stuff that lets me know. Uh, the easiest way is just literally just say, you know, comment on the video. Hey, Bone, love these videos. Keep them coming. If not, then I'll um, definitely make other kinds of videos or do other things with my time that are more effective and that are helping people because at the end of the day, I'm really just trying to help you guys, showing you cool new gear, these uh, Sundays and, and days where I get out here and do these live unboxings. I'm gonna try and share a little inspirational message, a little fun stories, and then show some gear that I'll either tell you don't buy this because, you know, don't waste your money or get this cool thing. Check it out. All right. So definitely want to say thanks for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, testing out the Arctic cooler as well. Going to be testing out some other stuff. And then me and Jones might end up doing a little fishing here. Thanks for watching.